Yo, what's goody fam? Welcome to another episode of the Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Dewan Mutunga. This is a podcast about using psychology, tapping into the mindset of how to leverage psychology to create a better business, a better life, and ultimately a better you. On this episode, we're going to be talking about effective communication, right? But specifically, effective communication when it comes to couples in relationship. Now, um, specifically romantic relationships, and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give credit to to D. 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 gave us the the inspiration behind this episode. So if I ruffle some feathers, you know what I mean? Don't bring the smoke to me. <laughs> I don't want none of the smoke, but but really I think this is an interesting episode, um interesting topic for us to get into because uh, most of us are um, eventually, well, I would hope you would want to be in a relationship at some point. I'm not saying everybody needs to, but we we are in relationship with people on a daily basis, platonic, romantic. We're going to focus on romantic relationships. Hopefully we get y'all a wife or a husband or, you know, what, you know whatever your thing is. Um, but yeah, I want to, I think, let me back up. So, one of the most important things about understanding this information, becoming self-aware, going through your assessment, studying exactly um, what you prefer, um, how you like to show up and why it gives you, it equips you with the understanding of yourself. And so now you're able to choose the people, places, and things that best align with who you are and avoid the things that are not in alignment with who you are. So I think the first step in this process, one, before we get into the nitty gritty, I think the first step here is, one, understand your behavioral tendencies and your preferences and your communication style, right? Understand self first, become self-aware. And that is actually just a, a lifelong sort of journey and process, right? That's not something that you just uh, do for a period of time and then you put it down. That's a life's work. But self-awareness really uh, is about remaining in the question in real time, right? And once you start living, it becomes a lifestyle. So understand self and then get an understanding of the other person, the people or the person who's across from you, what is their behavioral tendencies? What is their communication style? What are their values? Like understanding who they are. And then the third step is learning how to attune yourself to speak in their language, to meeting them where they are, right? Um, I've said this before, but there's the golden rule of you do unto others as you would like others to do to you, right? Like something like that, right? The golden rule is do unto others as you would like others to do to you, right? Now, the challenge with that is if we're not the same kind of person, you may not like what I like. So if I'm treating you the way I like to be treated and you're not interested in that, we're going to have an issue. So what, what I think is most beneficial and most effective is what, you know, I call the platinum rule, right? So do unto others as they would like done to them, right? Speak somebody else's language. Meet them where they are. And that takes a little bit of work, right? That takes some time. That takes some some investment. But it pays off in the long run, right? So um, for those of y'all watching this now, we live right now. We just had um, we just had uh, Arkeisha say that she was married for 34 years, you don't do that by accident. And the very first thing she said was that communication is the key, right? So I think this is why this episode is going to be um, important, an important conversation for us. All right, so we're going to base this off of the, the the personality types. So if you have an assessment, pull your assessment up. If your husband, your wife, your boo got an assessment, tell them to pull their assessment, pull up, Um if there's somebody you're interested in, you might want to get them to take the assessment so you can follow what we're getting into. I'm saying don't be weird, though. Don't just go up to somebody and be like, let me assess you. Here, take this thing because 
they they're gonna probably curve you. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they're gonna curve you. Somebody somebody walked up to me and be like, Hey, I need you to take this thing so we could I'll be like, Yes, yeah, it's, it's a dub. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> But get get the people around you to take the assessment, right? You become self aware, they become self aware, and now the game is figuring out how you guys align with each other or uh, renegotiating the agreements of the relationship, right? So um, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go through each personality type and let you know how you should best communicate with the other types, right? So I'm gonna start with high D's, right? These are people who are um, very assertive, very driving, very demanding, right? These are people who are natural problem solvers. These are people who are wired to um, approach and solve problems. Their communication style is very direct, is very straightforward, is very bottom line, and is very matter of fact, right? So if you are somebody who is a high D, um, if you're somebody who's a high D, and you're speaking to another high D, somebody who's also direct and matter of fact, you want to simply just use your natural communication style, right? Simple and straightforward. Now, unlike some of the other types, um, D's don't really stay around each other for too long, right? They don't necessarily mix and match or they don't share space for too long because D's are... Uh, they they really care about respect. They care about space. They care about boundaries and postures. So when you could put high I's together and high S's and high C's together, two D's, the more time they spend together, the more likely they are to sort of uh, butt heads a bit. And and for D's, that's not really a problem because we, we uh, look at confrontation like it's a way to uh, move forward and, and, and get closer together. Right. So we don't run from confrontation. We don't run from problems. But there's going to be a little bit more friction, a little bit more posturing, you know, but the conversation between these are very straightforward. So you want to use your natural uh, communication style, but you want to avoid running into situations where your ego clashes. Right. So now because uh, you're used to being assertive and you're used to taking control and dominating a space and you're in communication or in relationship with somebody who's also the same way. Now you have to figure out where you want to bend or where you where their way of being or their choice or, you know, there's you've got to acquiesce in certain instances. Right. You, you, you can't um, want to control everything when you have two people who are very controlling um, that could be a little bit of a sticky situation and egos could get in the way. So the second thing is not to allow your egos to clash. Um, the third thing is be prepared to have to confront each other, right? Be prepared to confront each other early, often, and continuously. It's something that's going to happen, right? Again, very authoritative personalities, very direct, driving, demanding. Um, there's, there's a lot of posture. There's a lot of... Um, respect and boundaries and space. And if you have two people who are like that, more than likely things will get chippy at some point. But um, it's really in the name of respect and reestablishing space and positioning. Um, and, and these um, are naturally competitive. So that'll be a, a, a piece there. But the conversations are usually really bottom line, direct and to the point. It isn't anything super exhaustive. But again, I think the most important point when you, when you are a D speaking to another D, you want to just be your natural self and those conversations will flow. Um, they will flow very easily. Now, if you're a D speaking to an I, right? Eyes are very much about experience, very much about feel. They care about the feng shui, the energy, right? When things get too rigid, they tend to remove themselves from the environment. High eyes are all about making people feel appreciated, making people feel like they belong. They like to create a sense of connection. They want to socialize. They're, um, they're expressive in their, in their approach to dealing with people. Now, if you're a high D speaking to a high I, my first tip to you is to be open and friendly, right? Um, and what I, what I mean is you want your, your, your posture and your energy to be inviting. 
So me being a high D, I actually have a really low I. So most people will say like, hey, you don't really look approachable or, hey, you need to smile. Like, you know, like, is everything OK? I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. They're like, well, tell your face because I'm very just uh, kind of just on point all the time. And so when you're speaking with a high I as a high D, you want your body language, you want your facial expressions, you want your posture to be inviting. Don't cross your arms. Um, kind of keep your body language, you keep your body open. Um, and you want to make sure you you stay in somewhat of close proximity, right? Um, you want to take some time to socialize and you want to take some time to to get into small talk, right? How eyes like for you to inquire about them. How was your day? How was your weekend? Oh, I liked it. You know, I like that color on you. Right. Um, what did you get into this weekend or um, how was the concert? Whatever the case may be, high eyes are into relating to people, They're into connection. And so they they care about the small talk. I've made the mistake before of, um, you know, it was actually in a, in a work context, but I made the mistake of working with a high eye. And every time we would get into conversation, I would just get straight to the business and I would realize it would be disruptive to them. Um. If you're in relationship, right, and, and this is somebody that you're looking to build life with, you have to understand that as a high D, you care about results, but the high I cares about experience. So it's not so much about doing the thing. It's about who you're being when you're doing what you're doing. Right. So, yeah, we're talking, but are we laughing? Are we smiling? Um, does it feel warm? Does it feel accepting or does it just feel like you just talking at me? Um, does it feel like you, you chastising me or are you just offering me um, a suggestion? Those are things that are really important. The next thing is make sure you give them um, praise and recognition. Right. So what I mean by that is you want to be affirming of the high. I. So I know as a high D that you are very matter of fact, very straight to the point and bottom line. But you want to say, hey, that's a good job. Or, hey, I really think that's a great idea. You know, like you want to be affirming in your communication with with a high eye. Um, the next thing is talking to a high S. Right. So if you are high D talking to a high S, I need for you to slow down. Number one, slow down and be mindful of your body language and your gestures. High S's care about space. They're wired for safety and stability, and they like for things to be paced, and they like for things to be predictable. So if you are a high D and you're engaging with somebody who's a high S, right? And, and here's the thing. Uh, if you look at the chart, high Ds and high Ss are actually juxtaposed to each other. They're opposites. So when you say like opposites attract, Ds and Is, I mean, Ds and Ss are attracted to each other. They usually gravitate to one another. High S's are con, uh, conflict averse. They're risk averse. They don't like confrontation. And D's lean and run into it. So S's feel a sense of security in relationship with a D. And a D appreciates an S because they are accommodating and they will go with the decisive nature of a D. And so they kind of work together. But the tricky part about it, the challenge is because high S's are so accommodating, and the D is are so decisive and moving so fast, we can get into situations where high D's think that high S's are okay with things that they are not. They will say yes to things uh, in being accommodating, and we will take that and run with it. And really, we haven't taken the time to get buy-in or seeing if they're really comfortable with what it is that we're talking about or what we're doing. So as a high D, you want to make sure that you slow down. You want to make sure that you are supportive and you give them assurances. You are very confident as a high D, but a high S needs reassurance. They It takes time for them to build trust. It takes time for them to feel comfortable for things because, again, they're wired for stability and security, so they don't like to abruptly make moves or changes. They don't like to make, they don't like to uh, pivot super quick, right? They, they like to gradually transition into things if they have to change. So you want to make sure that your, your, your pace, your cadence when you speak in is very slow, is very comforting. Uh, you don't want to be using a lot of hand gestures and be moving around body language because 
is going to start to turn them off. Right. Um, the next thing is you want to give them alternatives. Right. So in communicating with a high S as a high D, you want to give them some options that they can choose from that they can step into as opposed to deciding for them or coming to them. What do you want this or do you want that? Right. So um, one of the things that will often come up is, hey, like, what do you want to eat? I'm like, ah, the high S might be like, ah, I don't know. Well, do you want to eat Chinese food? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can eat that. Like, are you sure? Yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Like, listen, if that's not what you want to eat, just let me know. No, it's fine. Like, they're accommodating. So you really need to take some time and give them some options. Like, hey, if you're not interested in this, if you don't want Chinese, you want Italian food, you want Mexican food, like, what are you interested in? And they might say, hey, like, uh, I'm really not interested in pasta. I kind of was feeling like I want a burger. And now... You're making some progress, but you have to take some time. You have to give them some options and you have to let them know that it's OK. You want to uh, you ever hear like the phrase that you want to hold somebody's hand and walk them through something. That's what you have to do as a high D with a high S. And that takes some maturity on you. And because as high D's, we like to move and we like to, you know, we like to uh, to, to move with rigor. But that's just not how high S's are, are wired. Yo, what's goody fam? Listen, I know, I know. I'm going to let you get back to the episode. But I wanted to take a minute to let you know about the Human Behavior Mastery course. Yes, we have a course that we put together for coaches, consultants, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I know you're listening to the pod and it's all of this numbers and the, the adaptive and the natural, the D, the I, the attributes. We put together a comprehensive course to walk you through exactly how to understand each one of the personality types, each one of the values, and we're going to show you exactly how to get the most out of each type, what things you need to avoid, what environments to put you in, and what pieces to put around you to be successful. So if you're looking at taking your business, your life, or your relationship to the next level, make sure you go check out the Human Behavior Mastery course. Back to the episode. If you are a high D speaking to a high C, right? Now, high Ds and high Cs are both task-oriented, so they care about the doing of things. High Ds are about efficiency. Okay, let's have this conversation. We don't need to be long-winded. Let's, let's just let's get this over with. Okay, okay, let's address this. High Cs care about effectiveness. So they are looking about not only how to do something, but how to do it correctly. They feel like they need to be correct and they are, are afraid of making mistakes. They're afraid of judgment. So they want to make sure that that they're doing the right thing the right way. So as a high D talking to a high S, you're going to be dealing with somebody who's going to ask you a lot of questions. Let them. High, high C's ask a lot of questions because they have a fear of making a mistake. They have a fear of judgment. And so if you want to communicate effectively with them, let them ask questions and be willing to answer the questions and answer them directly. Right. Um, you want to use logic as much as possible, which isn't really an issue um, with a high D because we operate with logic. But you want to make sure that you get into some details, a little bit more details, over communicate more than you would normally do. This is going to make the high C feel comfortable. This is going to allow them to check the boxes in their mind. Like, okay, this is, they have to go through this uh, evaluation process. Like it's like a checklist, it's systematic in their mind. Like, okay, we did this, we do that. All right. So you have to be patient with them. You got to be patient. Take your time. Allow them to ask their questions. Don't try to rush them. Don't make them feel sped up. But just be straightforward because that's how they like to. So that's the good side. They like to be straightforward and, and to the point. They like to do stuff, but you have to allow them to go through their process. All right. So if you're a high D, that's how you speak to a D, a I, a S, and a C. Now my high eyes, my people who are the people people. Y'all are uh, super interactive, very engaging, very persuasive, right? Y'all are very vibey. Y'all like to stir that. Y'all like the straw that stirs the drink. If you're talking to a high D, 
please be to the point. Like, okay, like, hey, how you doing? How's your weekend? And get straight into it. The longer we prolong that dialogue, now the D is starting to get agitated. And the D is probably going to start checking out of the conversation and listening to keywords. So if you're a high I, hit the small talk, make the personal touch, and then get into what we're talking about. Two, um, keep it. Uh, <laughs> my mother used to say, hey, keep it cute. Okay, like, <laughs> don't, though you are very relational and though you are very friendly and very warm, high D's like to handle business. So if we, we, have, we, we, we talk about things or it's something that we need to do, make sure you're getting straight to the point and you're addressing what needs to happen. Right, so if, because here's the thing, a high D especially if you're in a relationship and there's something that we need to discuss, a high D's mind goes to, oh, this is a problem or this is something that we need to address. And if you are being long-winded or being expansive or it may make them feel like you're kind of beating around the bush and it, and it may cause them to get a bit frustrated, right? Um, when there's a problem, high D's want to solve the problem. It's a way of them alleviating stress and anxiety. So you want to get straight to the point you don't want to make, uh, you don't want to waste time, right? So don't beat around the bush, be as direct as possible and maintain a, a physical, ma maintain a phys maintain some sort of physical distance when you're talking about something that's very serious, right? So wanting to be all, you know, if you're in a relationship, you want to be touchy and like lovey dovey when you're trying to have a serious conversation ain't really, ain't really going to work. Right. So how they going to be like, wait, 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 hold up. Like, what's what's going on? Like, what's happening? And so you want to you want to be mindful of 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 personal space and then distance when you're having a conversation. Um, these are known to have, you know, egos, you know, got some pride, strong willed. So as a high I in relationship with a high D, you want to. You know, make them feel important. You want to, um, as the people say, stroke their egos a bit, right? And nobody does that better than a high eye. It goes a really long way, right? These are wired to care about things of importance. So you um, affirming them in that way really goes a long way. The other thing to be mindful of when being in relationship with a D is not to feel rejected or take personal their directness and bluntness. So again, high D's are very matter of fact, results oriented, bottom line communicators. You may ask them a question and they may be what you feel to be very short in their answer. You may feel like they're more guarded. Um, and compared to you, they are, but... That's just the way they communicate, right? So it, one of the things that I tell people is, with me, I'm just being honest, people feel like they got to pull teeth with me sometimes. And my thing is like, if you ask me the right question, I'll give you the answer that you're looking for. But you, you got to know what to ask me. And it may feel like you got to ask me 10 questions to get to the answer because I'm not uh, expansive in my explanations. But as a high eye, you're somebody that's just naturally going to be more expressive, than me. So, so don't, don't be, um, don't feel a way about how direct they are. Don't, don't feel like they're, they're trying to keep something from you or they're being guarded. That's just how to communicate. Um, as a high eye speaking to another high eye, be mindful to, uh, to eventually get to the business. Right. So, um, it reminds me of that, uh, it reminds me of that, um, like well, I see this, I see this in the hood, but but black people, like, hey, I, I like your hair, like I want my hair to be just like yours. I'm trying to be like you, and I like that sort of vibe. It's like, okay, that's cool, but eventually, if you keep doing that, y'all not gonna get anything done. Y'all will just be back and forth, just complimenting each other, and now the conversation ain't getting nowhere, right? So, don't compete for attention. Don't compete for recognition. Don't like, okay, cool, hey, hey. Now let's get into what we're talking about. Right. 
high eyes have the ability to shine light on people, but they also have the ability to suck all of the light out of the room and keep the focus on them. And so you want to be mindful of that in relationship with another high eye because it may start to feel like y'all are competing with each other for attention. Um, stick to business and in communication, if you're an eye talking to an eye, you want to walk away from that conversation with an action item, with some sort of commitment, with some sort of next step, because I'm sure the conversation went into a bunch of different directions, but you want to land on something and have something to walk away from the conversation so that you can move forward with, you know, with the dialogue. High S's, right? So high S's and high I's are both people oriented. They're very relational in nature. The difference is the high I is more extroverted and the high S is more introverted. So high S's want to help people directly. They want to help people up front. They want to help people in their face. And high S's, high S's like to, <laughs> high S's like to uh, be more behind the scenes, right? They, they care about, uh, you know, sort of staying out of the way, right? Um, so when you are a high I talking to a high S, you want to make sure that you slow down and take time to earn their trust, right? So one thing about high eyes, y'all know how to sell a tone to the phone, right? Y'all are just blessed with a mouthpiece where y'all know how to just talk and it could come across like y'all being slick sometimes or y'all finessing because y'all just got the gift of gab naturally. And a high S is like, I, I like to take my time and ease into things. And if you slick talking and you saying all the right things and it sound good, a high S might be like, okay, I got to watch out for you because you, you know what I'm saying? You, this, this sound real good. So let me just, so take time to earn their trust. Then you, you can't microwave relationship with a high S. It's just not going to work. You have to, you have to uh, slow cook it, right, over time. Um, don't be overly social. So um, don't, now I'm just saying this because it's something that you may hear, but don't do too much. Don't be overly touchy and hey, you know, like you do that, high S is going to be like, whoa, you're doing way, that's, slow down, right? You want to gradually flow with them. You want to you be smooth. You want to operate, you want to operate with finesse. You don't want to finesse, if that makes sense. Um, and again, you're, you're naturally warm, but. As a high eye, again, you're somebody who is gifted at shining the light on somebody and making people feel like they belong. Uh, S is thrive off of those assurances, off of those touch points, off of someone making them feel good because high S's care about being seen as reliable, being seen as somebody who people can count on and who um, comes through for other people. So you giving them uh, you showing them gratitude and you giving them assurances is something that goes a really long way for them. Okay, so as a high I dealing with a high C. Now, like I said, the D and the S are juxtaposed to each other, but the I and the C are juxtaposed to each other. So those are the opposites that usually attract. The high I is usually in the clouds and the high C is the anchor of reality. They want to bring you down to earth. So... As a high I talking to a high C, you want to make sure that you keep it a little buttoned up because one, high C's don't like um, to show too much emotion and they like to stick on task and they like to be factual. So your opinion, though you want to give it as a high I, the high C really just cares about what objectively is the thing. Right. They they want you to be factual. They don't want fluff. They don't want you. Uh, they don't want you to tap dance around things. They want you to get straight to the point. They want you to answer their questions, which is where you guys will connect. But I want you to understand that a high C asking you questions isn't them salt shaking on you. They are not trying to be pessimistic or a Debbie Downer. They're not trying to. uh rain on your parade 
they're really trying to create understanding. And for you as somebody who's a high eye and you like to flow, that could feel like somebody kind of like blowing your vibe or blowing your mood, right? But but that's, you know, if you can be patient with them, that's going to go a long way for y'all in communication. Um, be direct and be confident in your explanation and, and your answers to them. They're going to ask you a lot of questions. Now, as a high eye, you may be tempted to go into story mode, but for them, that is getting away from the facts and the logic of things. So make sure you root what you're saying to some sort of credible source, maybe somebody that they trust or a book that you read or, you know, something you saw on TV or documentary, something that's grounded in something that they can go look into and research. Just saying. Okay. Now my high S's. Can I, can I keep it a band with y'all? I like, I'm, I'm open, you know, to the different types of people. Like ain't nobody good. Ain't nobody bad. And, you know, high S's are some of my favorite people. I'm gonna keep it a being with you. I just, I, I rock with high S's. Um, they just good folk. They good folk. So for my high S's, you like to be predictable. You like to be stable. You like to be cool, calm, and collected. Talking to a high D, one, I need you to be confident. I need you to be self-assured. I need you to be yourself. Um, just being transparent. Um, one of the challenges, I love high S's. One of the challenges that I have with high S's in communication is, um, and just to be transparent, most of my relationships, my romantic relationships have been with people who are high S's the opposite track thing. One of the, the, the challenges is I need to be able to trust that you could be honest with me. And so because a high S is so accommodating, they may agree to things that they don't really want to do, or they may say yes to things that they really want to say no to. And for me, if I can't trust you or I feel like I have to always be questioning, it makes me feel uneasy. And so the, the, the best thing that you could do for a high D as a high S is to just be authentically yourself. If you like something, say you like it. If you don't like it, say you don't like it. What you have to understand, because high S's are conflict averse. They, they're relational and they don't like to rattle the cage and they, they don't want to uh, shake things up. But. Conflict avoided is conflict multiplied. So the more that you avoid it, the more of a problem it becomes, especially with somebody who's a high D who's trying to lean into it. You got to You got to bring that stuff up to a high D. You, you need to address things. They're going to respect that about you. They're go, that's going to really endear you to a person who's a high D is for you to stand your ground and for you to be straight about what what you like and what you don't like. Um. You also want to get to the point. You want to get to the point when you talk. Um, you don't want to be, you know, your cadence is a little bit slower. A D wants to get straight to it. So you want to speak clearly and concisely and you want to do so um, with a bit more force and with a bit more authority than what you're comfortable with. You may feel like you're offending the D, but you really not. It's just like you're not used to somebody who can talk straight with you like that. So you may feel like you overstepped it or you may like as a high S talking to a D, you may want to put a lot of qualifiers or disclaimers like, Hey, you know, you know, I, I, I'm saying this in love or I want to just talk to me straight. I'm saying this as a high D just let me just talk to me straight as a high S talking to a high I appreciate and be open to the friendliness and the enthusiasm of the high eye. They have a lot of energy. They get excited about things. And you're more chill, more nonchalant. When you're nonchalant, first of all, as a high S, it's really hard for people to read you. So talking to a, a high eye, and they have a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and their body language is 
sort of electric. It's it's optimistic in nature. And you just sort of being chill, they may seem like it's, they may feel like you're being dismissive or you're not interested. And if the vibe feels off for them, they're going to start to pull back. So you want to, you want to use language. You want to, you want to open your body language up, uh, open yourself up to their openness and their energy and their enthusiasm and friendliness. Um, you don't want to get bogged down. You don't want to get bogged down in the details with a high, high eye, right? They are very fluid, very open, very expansive. They don't like to get into the weeds. They want to be let, they want to be kept in the loop, but they don't want to be, uh, they don't, they don't want to get into the, the, the minute details cause it makes them feel kind of boxed in and it, it, it turns them off. So you want to keep it free flowing. You want to speak sort of at a high level in a very relational way. And you want to appeal to their, um, their sense of self. I don't want to say ego because I don't want to say egotistical, but they're, they're very relational people and they like, they like praise and they like affirmation. So affirm them when you're talking to them. It, it goes a really long way. Let them know when they're doing a good job. Um, if you need to give them some, some, some constructive feedback, use the sandwich method, right? So affirm, a little grow here, affirm on the other end. Like, I mean, it may feel like, well, why can't I just say what I want? But if you want to be an effective communicator to your booski, then you want to, you want to be affirming. If you are a high S speaking to another high S, right? Um, don't wait for each other to be comfortable. So high S's take time to gradually shift into something. If you are two high S's, one, there's a there's your your relationship lacks a sense of urgency. And so it may take y'all a lot of time to come to agreement, come to a consensus. High S's also tend to be somewhat indecisive. So you got two people who are always accommodating, always indecisive. It's going to take y'all a really long time to come to decisions. And you, again, don't want to wait till both of y'all are comfortable. You're going to have to make decisions and you're going to have to communicate much earlier than what you you're comfortable with. Just so things can move along. Um, provide assurance, provide uh Provide a sense of confidence, right? Posture a bit. Um, think of your higher self, right? So where you may want to shrink or you may want to play to the back as a high S. Being with somebody who is a high S, they love demonstrations of confidence. They like assuredness. So you want to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like poke your chest out a little bit. Let your hair down and, and really stand 10 toes down. Like, that is going to make them connect with you. They, they are attracted to a sense of assuredness and confidence. Um, if you are someone who's a high S now dealing with a high C, uh, you want to bring a level of confidence to the conversation. Now, the high C talking with you is going to be more precise, more logical, they're going to ask you more questions and that may make you feel uncomfortable, especially if they ask you something that you weren't prepared to answer. Still show up confidently in that conversation, right? You want to um, use facts, give background information on why something is that case and, and look at it from the perspective that this is going to... Um, this is going to bring y'all closer. It may feel a bit like the C is interrogating you, but they're really asking you questions to get information. Um, and I think the, the best part of the, the S communicating with a C is you're a natural team player. You're naturally supportive. And high C's have um, this foundational fear of being judged or making a mistake. So you actually make them feel really comfortable. You make them feel... Uh, really safe and 
that that helps them feel like they're not going to be criticized or they're not going to receive negativity. So lean into that when you're communicating with a high C. So my high C's, my people who are cerebral, right? My people who are very structured, very detail oriented, very matter of fact, right? You like to get things done and you like to get things done right. When you're communicating with somebody who is a high D, y'all are both task oriented, uh, task oriented, but the high D likes to move with rigor, with speed. They're not afraid to make mistakes. They ain't afraid to, to get into it. They learn by doing. When you're speaking with them, don't use excessive facts. Don't uh, get uh, expansive in your conversation. Don't start pulling from this research that you found over here. Just get straight to the point. Bottom line, it's for me. Right. The language of a high D is how many by when. What are we doing at what time? I don't need to know this was a Michelin star and they've got a review over. I don't need to know none of that. What type of food we eat and where we going? What time? Cool. I'm straight. Right. Get to the get to the point. Get to the bottom line. Um Focus on high level details, right? These are wired for things of importance and they like to move with efficiency. So they don't need your whole 10 step, uh, 10 step program. They don't need all of the different points. They need the most important points. Think about cliff notes, right? Cliff notes was a thing. I may be dating myself. I don't know. But instead of like reading the whole book, we would just hit the cliff notes and just get the synopsis or the summary. Give me the abbreviated version. I'm not really interested in you being super long-winded. And let's just get right to it. Um, with a high D, you want to lean into your rationale. You want to lean into your logical nature, but do so in letting them know um, how something benefits them, right? P uh, appease the ego of the D, right? Let them know that um, you trust them, that they're helping you solve a problem. Let them know that you appreciate them, but always approach it from a, from a logical perspective from, um, okay, well, this is how this does that. They're very, uh, um, like ROI focused. They're very, they're very much about efficiency. Is this a good use of my time? Is this a good use of my energy? So when you're communicating with them, like, like here's the thing about communicating with a D and so, this is good specifically about somebody who's a C. So C's are very matter of fact, and they're used to correcting. They're used to like holding a space together. So to a high D, a high C feels very like nitpicky, right? Like you're trying to correct me or you telling me what to do. Now you can't really tell a D what to do, but you can give me a suggestion. You can give me a recommendation and you can make me think that it was my idea to do this thing. And I might say, hey, I got a good idea. Like, I think I'm going to go and start working out. But you told me that like three days ago. But the way you delivered the information was important. That's what I mean by using logic and appealing to the ego of a D. And because you can't uh, direct us to do something because now we're going to butt heads. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, as a high C, talking to a high I, high I's got a lot of energy and enthusiasm. You want to look to be as warm and inviting as possible. They can experience you as being dry and being boring and being a Debbie Downer. So you want to sort of lighten up, right? Get a, get a little swaggy, right? Like uh, let your hair down a little bit. Open up. Um, loosen up. Also... Uh, as a high C, you tend to be on the conservative side. You tend to be on the more uh, pessimistic side of the spectrum where high eyes are very optimistic, very glass half full types. So you need to be open when you speak to them. You need to speak in the language of what's possible when you talk to them. Right. Um, don't just talk about what could go wrong. Also speak about what can go right. That will support you in conversation with somebody who um, who is a high eye. Don't get too crazy into the details because it's going to turn them off. 
but also make sure that you um, you give them a summary at the end of the dialogue. So, hey, we got to go on vacation. I know it's really exciting. Hey, make sure you send me your passport, the date you're available, and uh, what kind of hotel you're interested in. You don't need to get into the nitty gritty of is oh, this is a five star. You want this? Like, and they're gonna be like, ah, I don't know. Or when you talk to them, they're gonna be so much in the imagination. They're gonna ideate so much. They're gonna like project themselves into the future that you're gonna want to pull them back down, and it's gonna knock all the air out of their their sails, right? So just just give them a quick little summary, little action item, and and move the conversation along. As a high C talking to a high S, right? Now, the good thing about y'all in communication is one, oh, here's a, here's a good piece. It just came to my mind too. As communicators, high D's and high I's are very different from high S's and high C's. In communication, high D's and high I's don't mind interrupting each other in communication. They, um, they will interrupt to add value or to bring something fresh and new to the conversation. And they don't get offended when people cut them off. Like they can, they can go back to forth. They can, Oh yeah, but look, yo, did you think about that? Y'all can do that together, right? Y'all can have banter, so to speak. High C's and high S's. They're, they're the type of conversationalists where they're going to let you speak and wait until it's their turn to talk. And then when they're speaking, they're expecting you to give them the same grace and not cut them off or not interrupt them when they're talking. And so they could get offended when you cut them off in conversation. So you want to make sure that you respect the bounds of conversation, um, you know, when dealing with S's and C's because they like to hold space and keep sort of a structure to the conversation, keep some sort of process to the to the conversation um a person who's a high c talking to a high s i know you don't like to show emotion and you're very like get straight to it but you got to be friendly you ain't got to be like on 10 but you got to be warm uh, and you got to be inviting right y'all both kind of move at the same speed um but i'm gonna need you to not barrage them with information and barrage them with facts don't just blitz them and hit them with a whole bunch of stuff. Like you kind of got to ease and, you know, kind of like get in there uh, when it comes to the conversation. So you may ask a question and then sort of get in, sort of develop some transitional phase, uh, transitional phrases that allow y'all to ease in and out of certain conversations. Right. So if, for example, you're like, um, why? Why do you keep leaving your shoes? Um, why do you keep leaving your shoes in the middle of the living room? They may say, hey, you know, I'm kind of tired. I just put them there. They're like, okay. Well, do you think there's a better place for, do you think there's a better place for us to put this? Or you can redirect them into something else. But if you just start hitting them with a bunch of stuff, they're going to feel attacked. And they're going to get very defensive. And high S's will shut down on you. And again, it takes time for them to build trust. So you want to make sure that you ease into and have transitional and redirection language. Um, you want to make sure that you give them plenty of assurances. You're a person who likes to use facts. They're very relational. You may be asking them questions they don't know the answers to, and that may make them feel uncomfortable. So just let them know, hey, it's okay. You can get back to me later or, um, you know, when you get a chance. Be patient with earning their trust and be patient and understand that um, being in relationship with high S's is like a bamboo tree, right? The bamboo tree takes a really long time. When that seed is planted, it takes a bit of a long time to, to take root. But once it sprouts and it hits the surface, it grows abundantly really fast, and that's how it is in relationship with a high S. It takes them a really long time to feel safe with you. But once they uh, fix themselves to you, they are super open. They will do anything for you. They are truly the ride or dies. 
Um, but so you just got to give them, you got to give them some time. If you are a high C dealing with another high C, now y'all speak the same language. So the conversation is going to be very tight knit, very buttoned up. Um, but I'm going to actually offer that you add some, some energy, add some friendliness, add some warmth into the relationship. Two high C's in relationship can feel like y'all are more business partners than, you know, in relationship. And uh, y'all can't color outside the lines or add no zest or spice to the relationship or to the conversation. So be intentional about being friendly, being warm, adding some different things. Watch out for uh, detail tangents. Like it's almost like this posture in this like... Um, it's like a almost like a pissing contest. Well, I know this, and not like the the know it all, the know it all beef, the but the butting of the heads and the minds, right? Um, just just keep it cool. Make sure that you uh, present the pros and the cons, right? That's the language that y'all both speak. Use facts, but show evidence in both areas. Show why this could work. Show why it can't work, and then get ready to. Um, be comfortable ending the conversation. Be be comfortable getting closure about something faster than you feel comfortable normally, right? So what that so just in layman terms, get comfortable with letting things go, right? Don't be so uptight about things. Let things go. Give some wiggle room, some buffer, some space. Give some grace and mercy. Right, y'all are two people who are very, very particular. Um, could be extreme almost. You believe there's a right and a wrong way to do everything, and that can stifle a relationship. That can make the communication very restrictive when relationships are supposed to be things that ebb and flow and be expansive. So you don't want to be so rigid. You want to give yourself some some space to thrive and grow and expand and and explore what's What's possible? Um, so yeah, I think we we touched on everything. Um, I I want to say, um, just as a as a as a bow on top of this, y'all know that I love to speak to how we can use our differences to make a difference. How we can leverage. Uh, what's different about us to be a blessing to somebody and how we can leverage somebody's blessing. I mean, how yeah, leverage somebody's uh, strength to be a blessing to us in our, our struggle. The thing I want to caution you to is expectation and entitlement in relationship and communication. Expectation and entitlement is like relationship cancer, like it will destroy the relationship. The communication won't go anywhere. If you are looking at a person saying you need to listen to me or you need to hear what I'm saying and you're not seeking to hear them and understand them, hear their heart, it's going to be a real, real challenge. You should always don't approach the situation. Don't approach the conversation from a from a place of knowing you should always seek understanding. Right. You should always, always remain in the question and seek to understand why somebody thought this way or where that came from or or why they went about it that way and um, what that means to you. But don't don't have expectation entitlement in in communication with somebody and expect somebody to just bend to you uh, all the time. That is going to be dangerous. Right. There's there's a point at which we can require something of somebody that they're just not capable of, right? If you're somebody who's a high I and you're dealing with somebody who's a high D, yeah, you you are more, um, you can vent more. They are pretty straightforward in their conversation. They're not being dry with you. They're not being like standoffers or guarded. Y'all just... Deal with each other in two different ways. How can y'all figure out how to add some some balance to that, right? How can you how can you um, look at y'all differences and see how y'all can add flavor to the relationship and build a dynamic that works for the two of you, right? One of the things that I think also is important when you are communicating is 
to communicate in a way that isn't uh, accusatory in nature, but seeks to get clear, right? So clearing with a person and creating some understanding. So, hey, um, this thing that you did, right? So, hey, you, you like to make plans at the last minute. It, it, I'm experiencing you as making plans at the last minute, very abruptly, very impulsively. And the experience that creates for me, it makes me feel like you're not putting thought into this. It makes me feel like um, there's a lack of consideration. It, it makes me feel like I'm insignificant. What would be helpful to me is if you do X, Y, Z. It what would be helpful for me is if we can sit down and once a month we have a planning meeting and we can sort of map out what the month looks like for us so that we have time to schedule our date nights and um, our time to handle, you know, business or go over our budget or plan for our vacation. Can we do something like, like that's the level of communication. That's how you want to get into it. Because you you don't want to communicate at somebody like you know and you are, um, it's, it's an indictment on their person or you're you're criticizing their being. A lot of times it's the behavior. A lot of times it's the way in which we do something, not who we are. That is the challenge. And if you can learn to speak to um, what's being created and what experience you have from that versus maybe attacking or directing it at the person, you'll really find that people hear you differently and people receive what you say in a very open and inviting way. And y'all can work through things and have healthy communication. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've been going all over the place with, with a lot of this, but I hope y'all found this valuable again. Um, relationships are literally the lifeblood of everything that we do. They matter. Um, and a lot of it starts, uh, in our, the most important relationship, the most important decision that you can make in your life is the decision of who your partner is going to be. And communication, um, is the heartbeat of that relationship. So you want to get this stuff right. Um, I'm saying that as a person who hasn't always gotten right, right. I've definitely messed up, um, relationships, just not understanding how to communicate with people. And I wish I had this information earlier so I want to bless y'all with it um but yeah take this apply it take notes pull up a chair get your boo get your you know what I mean your, your your husband your wife your significant other and really go through this and then I want y'all to take this and from this create space for y'all to have dialogue and really renegotiate the relationship and the way that you communicate with each other and figure out what serves you and lean in and then figure out what doesn't serve you and remove that from the equation. And hopefully the relationship gets enriched as a result. So, yeah, I'm going to get up out of here. I appreciate y'all. Again, I'm Dewan Mutungo and everything. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Um, share this with somebody who you know is looking to be in relationship. Share this with somebody who you know is currently in relationship. Share this with somebody who maybe, you know, is, is, is struggling or is on the other side of a relationship and is looking for um, some insight on what to change for the next one. Um, but make sure you share this. I want you to share this with at least three people in your network. Um, this is important information. And uh, I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all on the next part. Peace.